Hello. There are three different price tiers for Roliflex cameras. The original Roliflex, which I'm holding here, and there's also the uh, Rolicord, which is the cheaper entry level uh, camera that they produced uh, later on in uh, from 1933 for amateur. Uh, or non-professional users. Uh, and then there's also the Roliflex T, which quite, kind of falls in between. Now that's quite confusing. There are lots of different models within, within those tiers as well. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is explain to you the differences between the three different tiers and also help you to decide if you're thinking about buying one of these uh, film cameras in 2023, uh, which one is the best one for your specific needs. So whether you're an experienced uh, professional photographer uh, looking to acquire some new gear or you're just a hobbyist who's interested in getting into medium format film photography or specifically the square format uh, this video is going to really help you to decide which which model is right for you and please do stay till the end uh, to listen to my final conclusions so that you don't make a mistake and spend money on perhaps a camera that you don't necessarily need so Roliflex began um, producing twin lens reflex cameras like this one um, around 1929, so quite a long time ago. Um, and they weren't the first to do this, this kind of format, um, but they very quickly became the dominant um, sort of brand within this kind of format of camera. So it was mainly used initially by professionals, so journalists, uh, professional photographers, uh, war photographers like Robert Kappa, for example, uh, and it was fairly expensive, so it was quite prohibitive for um, you know people who were more hobbyists uh, like myself, for example. So what happened was that in uh, in 1933, uh, Roliflex came out with uh, this, which is the Roly Cord. This is actually a late model. It's a uh, it's a Roly Cord VB or 5B. Uh, so from between 1933 to 1976, um, there were various uh, evolutions of this particular camera. It's a more accessible budget camera. Um, it's approximately, or it was approximately half the price of a Roliflex, for example, uh, when they were first coming out into the shops in back in you know the 1940s, 1950s. Finally, in around 1958, I believe, they launched the Roliflex T, which really filled the gap between the Roly Cord, which was really for beginners, and then the Roliflex, which was for more professional people. Uh, and the, the Roly T, or the Roliflex T, rather, um, really filled that gap. Uh, so starting with the Roliflex then, so this has had many, many iterations from 1929 until around 1976 or even later, uh, depending on whether you count when uh, the company was taken over after bankruptcy. Um, I personally don't really look at those more modern versions. So this specific model is a Roliflex uh, 3.5F, so it's quite a late model. Um, and they also had a, so it's a, a 3.5 aperture uh, lens and they also had a f2.8 which is a, a slightly wider one which is the more sought after uh, and the more expensive by quite a long way uh, in terms of the the pricing so all of these cameras were very very simple to operate um, and uh, if you get one you'll be able to use it very very quickly it's quite simple there's a uh, viewing lens which is used to compose the image and to uh, focus the image and then there is uh, underneath that there is the taking lens which is the lens that actually takes the photo so they're not the same thing. So what you're looking through is here, but what's taking the picture is here. So there is something called parallax error, which is what happens is if you get very, very close, uh, you're looking through this lens, but the actual picture is being taken by the bottom lens. So what that means is if you're very close, uh, you may actually cut off the top of someone's head uh, if you're not careful. Uh, but what these Roliflexes have in common, all of them, including the Roly cord that I, I have, the 5B, uh, they have what's called parallax error correction. So what happens is uh, as you focus closer, uh, the framing sort of adjusts to move to make sure that you uh, it readjusts for that parallax error. So in theory, you won't get too much of a, a problem, even if you're at close focusing distances. You have two knobs on the side here uh, for adjusting shutter speed and aperture. Uh, so you can look down and here you can read out the, and you can see what uh, is the aperture and shutter, shutter speed that you're setting. And they're, they're both independent. So you can move each dial separately. So you can choose the aperture and you can set the shutter speed uh, based on the lighting conditions at the time. They all have a waist level finder like this, so you're looking down into the camera uh, when you're composing. And then there is a shutter release right here uh, for taking the picture. Uh, and then on these cameras, there is also then the, uh, the, the crank for winding on the film on. And on the Roliflex, the crank actually also cocks the shutter. 
So what happens is in one action, as you advance the film, uh, it, it, it also cocks the shutter so that you're ready to press the button and take the picture straight away uh, as soon as you're done. Uh, and then on here you have the focusing knob and there is also a light meter in this camera. So they came, some models came with light meters, some didn't have a light meter. This one does have one, so you can see the, the sort of light cells here. Uh, and then there is an indication here to see whether you're uh, underexposed or overexposed. Now, if you're going to buy one of these, um, I wouldn't worry too much about the meter. Um, I personally just uh, use a separate uh, light meter. And if, even if you don't have a light meter, you can download an app and just use your iPhone or other smartphone as, as a light meter if you prefer. So I would say the light meter isn't so important in this day and age and some of these light meters no longer work uh, as well as they should do. They're not as accurate anyway. So I wouldn't rely too much on that and I wouldn't base a purchase decision uh, based on the light meter. So this is another Roliflex, the um, uh, 3.5 E3. Uh, so slightly earlier model than the one I just had. Uh, but I wanted to show you uh, one thing that's very unique to the Roliflex that the other two do not have. And that's when you're loading the film uh, if you can see, there is actually a, an extra bar here which the film goes under and that's, this is very important when you're loading the film. It goes under this bar here um, and what happens then is once you close it, uh, once you close it and then wind on the film, uh, it will automatically sense when the film has, has advanced to the right place uh, based on the thickness of the backing paper. So as the, you wind on, uh, instead of just being paper, there's also film together, it becomes thicker. And the camera senses that and knows that you're at the beginning of frame one. So that's the difference between this one and then the Roly Cord uh, and later on the Roly, Roly Flex T. Uh, the Roly Cord and the Roly Flex T do not have this function. So what happens is you have to align the film uh, backing paper, has an arrow on it, and you have to align it with the red the red dots that are here um, and then that's and then you close it like that and then you you wind on from there and that's how this camera knows uh, when you're at the first frame so it's not automatic uh, but I have to say again um, it's it's uh, it's an innovation and a very handy um, sort of feature to have on the Roliflex that uh, automatic sensor um, but in everyday use I have to say I it's not really something that is a huge benefit um, just lining up the arrows takes about half a second longer than it would do uh, to just, just load it automatically. So again, not a massive uh, benefit, but it is one of the reasons why the Roliflex is more expensive. So now moving on to the Roly Cord, which as I mentioned before was launched in 1933. So slightly different, so it still has the two lenses, the taking lens at the bottom and the, um, the viewing lens and the focusing lens at the top. But what's slightly different here is that the, uh, the, the, to advance the film, instead of a crank, there is only a knob here, uh, which you wind on like that. And then uh, it doesn't cock the shutter. So what happens is you have, to, uh, you have to cock the shutter yourself like this before you take the picture. And then to take the picture, it's also the same, the same lever, but you just push it the other way. Don't know if you heard that. Uh, but you push it the other way to take, take the picture. There isn't a sort of a separate shutter button like there is on the Roliflex. Uh, and for, for this reason, some people don't like this kind of way of using because I've heard people say that you, you almost have to knock the camera to, a, to one side as you're hitting the shutter. I'm not sure that's true. I think if you hold it steady enough, you could just about get away with taking the picture without moving the camera too much. Um, but nevertheless, it's a, it's a slightly less uh, convenient way of taking the picture. Um, but again, not a huge difference. And I, I've still taken a lot of great pictures with, with this particular camera. Uh, so it's still great to use. Um, one of the things that is slightly less uh, convenient though is when you're setting the aperture and shutter, it's on these sort of levers that are around the lens, the, around the taking lens, uh, and you have to push in this one and then you can adjust them independently. If you let go, then moving any of these levers will actually move both aperture and uh, the shutter speed together. So they're kind of locked in a, in a fixed exposure sort of setting. And the other thing is that um, the reading is not as convenient because it's not, you can't see it from the top. You have to sort of look at the side. It's slightly less convenient than the Roliflex. Okay, so you have the Roly Cord as the budget model and then the Roly Flex as the more expensive uh, professional model. Uh, and then in 1958, uh, Roly Flex uh, came up with this, the Roly Flex T. Um, and this is actually the middle kind of tier 
Uh, so it's in between the Roly Cord and the Roly Flex in terms of pricing. The difference is that unlike the Roly Cord, this does have a crank just like the, um, the Roly Flex. It does have a separate shutter button. It's all, although it's slightly to one side instead of uh, at the front, uh, but nevertheless, you can still take the picture. So unlike the uh, Roly Cord, uh, which has two different levers to adjust the aperture and shutter speed, on the Rolyflex T, it's a different mechanism. So it's actually one lever on the left of the taking lens. And what you have to do is you have to pull it out to just move the aperture. And if you put it back in, it'll move the aperture and the shutter speed uh, in unison together. Uh, sort of, again, like an exposure lock system. Um, so what you have to do is just figure out how to get that right combination by pulling when you need to, uh, pulling out the lever and then pushing it back in. Uh, it's a little bit tricky at first, um, but after you've done it a few times, it really isn't uh, a big problem. Uh, but again, that's a, one of the quirks of the Ro Rolyflex T, which is very different to both the Roly Cord and uh, the Rolyflex uh, cameras, which both have two different dials uh, one for aperture, one for shutter speed. The Rolyflex T only has the one. But unlike the Roly Cord, you can see both the shutter speed and the aperture uh, just by looking directly down. So you don't have to look to one side. So again, slightly more convenient in terms of usage. And then you've got the focusing knob uh, again on the, uh, as yours, looking down on the left side. So crank a film advance on the right and then uh, focusing knob on the left. Otherwise, it's basically very similar. So all, all three of these cameras are actually very, very similar. They're just these slight differences. Um, in terms of the lens quality, um, the main difference is both the T, I believe, and also the Roly Cord only came in a F3.5 uh, variation in terms of the lens. So the Roly Flex uh, does also come in 3.5 and uh, F2.8, so slightly wider. It's only half a stop. So again, if I'm really, really honest, I would say there's not a huge difference. Half a stop difference is not going to make a lot of difference in terms of usage day to day. Okay, so that's more or less it for the three different uh, variations. Very, very little differences, subtle differences between the three. Um, if, if I'm really honest, I would say that um, it's nice to have the, the Roliflex. Um, but in terms of pricing on the second hand market now, these can be very, very expensive, upwards of a thousand to two thousand US dollars. Um, and so I would say the Roly Cord or the Roly, T, Roly Flex T, much, much better value for money. Um, you could probably pick these up for, I don't know, around 300, 400 uh, US dollars. Uh, and if you're lucky, you could find them in secondhand stores or jumble sales, uh, probably even, even cheaper. Um, and yet the quality of the images that these take, uh, aside from the differences in functionality and slight inconvenience of maybe having a, a knob instead of a crank, uh, to wind on the film and cut the shutter. In terms of the image quality, I, I really haven't noticed any big difference. And in fact, one, one of my most favorite uh, images was taken with this particular Roly Cord. Um, and it's, it's super sharp, super uh, high contrast, uh, and uh, an overall great shot that um, I'm still very proud of to this very day. So if you're looking to get into this kind of medium format twin lens photography, uh, twin lens camera photography. I highly recommend it. It's a very different experience to uh, using a digital SLR or a mirrorless digital camera um, or any kind of other, other camera. It's a unique experience. It's great, great fun. It's actually quite addictive. Uh, and in fact, I found that um, in recent weeks, uh, I've been going out only with my uh, Roly Flex or Roly Cord and not, I haven't even been bringing my digital camera with me at all uh, because this is the one that I really enjoy taking with me. Uh, and it also generates a lot of discussion with people on the streets, which is really helpful for the kind of photography I do, which is uh, just pay taking pictures of strangers. Having something like this really does help to strike out that conversation, make people more relaxed uh, and ultimately get better pictures. Uh, so in conclusion, um, Yes, if you have the money to spare and you're happy to do that, um, by all means go for the more expensive Roliflex. Um, but if not, if you're a bit more budget conscious, um, then honestly the Roliflex T and the Roly Cord, both fantastic cameras, really, really good cameras. You will not be disappointed. Um, be, do be careful if you're buying on eBay, of course, or other private sellers. Um, you know, make sure that they are working. Um, and ideally, I think it's better to buy from a reputable second-hand dealer who will have probably given it a little bit of a service, also checked through the whole thing, made, made, make sure it works properly um, and give you some kind of guarantee 
uh, even if it's just three months or six months, um, just for peace of mind that this is the route that I would recommend uh, rather than trying your luck uh, on, on the private sort of market. Uh, but once you do get one, um, I assure you, you'll, you'll have lots of fun with it. And um, please do let me know in the comments uh, if you have any other questions. Um, one other request, please do like and subscribe if you found this useful. Um, I'll be making a lot more content coming up in the future. Uh, this is just the beginning. And uh, there's also a playlist which I will link to down below, uh, which also uh, includes a lot of, quite a few of the other uh, videos I've already done that include references to these cameras and even images that I've taken with them, just in case you're interested to see a little bit more. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.